sure what I'm videoing today, but I know I can show you one thing. Um, we had some really bad thunderstorms last night, like, and a lot of lightning, and everybody was worried about me being outside and all that, but, so I was about to go inside, but I saw Walter Mellon running out on his own because mom was okay with being out in the thunder and the lightning, which is fine, right? Fine. For Carrie to, if that's what she wants to do, I can't really stop her, but Walter Mellon was was running and jumping and hippity hopping. And I was like, I need to go get him. Well, so I'm standing out by the garage talking to Ellie. He's like, are you sure this is safe? Like, are you going to be okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna be fine. I'm just gonna go get him and put him in the barn real quick. So I know he's okay. So I can come inside and be okay. Well, that decision made me not okay at all in fact because then it started to get worse so I took off running through the garage because the door was open but I didn't realize that we had some chicken wire not chicken wire uh some rolled fencing set up for when we were doing the Charlie and Echo project and we've left it out in case we needed to repatch something up and it got blown down from the wind you don't realize just how much you uh are very like subconsciously aware of your surroundings because when I went to go run I uh, I tripped over it and Ellie will tell you I flew and so I came away with some shiners I landed on my knees I protected my head and my face so let me show you what I've done all right let's see the worst I think it's pretty obvious I don't know if you can really get the gist of it um, I'm trying to See, oh yeah, look at that. It is below my knee joint, so I'm okay, you know, with the fluid, but I can touch it, and since there's so, it does hurt. Um, I thought I broke some bones yesterday when I did it, but I can touch it, and there's like blood underneath, because the hematoma is essentially just a bruise. Hematoma is a big pool of blood. I can feel the blood underneath it, so that's bad. I bruised this knee, my shoulders are sore, and I hit my elbow. Elbow's not bad, but my knee is bad. I could not walk yesterday. Um, I was actually screaming in the house. Um, it was pretty traumatic. Ellie didn't know what was wrong. So, yeah. That was how last night went. And look who I found. Good old Walter. It's really hard for me to come see him. I'm still really devastated about honey, but I'm trying. Oh. Hi. Hi. She would want me to give you love. You're such a big boy, and I'm working on taming you more. You're sweet. You are so sweet and so handsome, boy. You're getting big quick. But I'm in the barn, and I've been on... I'm talking. I've been on birth watch, and what I do not see is old mama. So, we gotta go find her. I have a feeling I know where she is, but man, she's gonna really make me walk all the way over there. She's been laying under the canoe, which, fine, if that's where you would like to birth, okay, we can do that. And it's cooler over there because there's a lot more shade, but she was laying weird this morning when I came out here and did chores. I was still able to do chores. That's why I told Ellie last night. I said, I have to be okay to do chores. So we were icing and elevating because I have to get my Polish palace, the run at least done today. The rain stopped me. I have to get it done today. Like it is very important to me. I need to get Hey Hey out of the stall. Um, I have some chicken lice that I didn't know was a thing. I mean, I knew about it, but I didn't think with it being so hot. I don't know. I just didn't know. So I need to get them out of there so they can get dust baths and stuff because that's how they naturally take care of it. Guys, where's old mama? Don't get in. I don't see her. Where did this goat go? Where is she, Daniel? Daniel, where is she? Hey, good boy. Hey, Trudy! <laughs> you look so adorable.
<laughs> I'll let you rest. Okay, we got Pablo. He's taking a bath. <gasps> Hi, girl. Hi, my girl. You, my girl. Look at you. You're all dirty. You took a sand siesta, or did you just go roll around? Bet you just went and rolled around. I believe this is Ducey. She was laying on the eggs this morning, the chicken and duck eggs, so good to see her. I actually get to touch her. She doesn't, like, hate when we're uh, by the eggs. She lets us touch her. I wish I could be a duck right now. I bet that water is a little warm, but I bet it feels good. We got Pablo and Adam or Steve who, well, they're in a little bit of a tiff right now, if I'm being honest. They haven't been coming to dinner together. And Adam or Steve's been coming with Ducey and Pablo's been coming with these friends. Um, I noticed on Ellie's video, a lot of y'all were like, it has like twine or something wrapped around them, but they don't, they got it off. If, um, if I thought, uh, I tried to like look at them and catch them, but it didn't happen, but they got it off naturally. There's old mama. I see no babies. Is there a reason for that? Ducey, tell her about it. Tell her that having babies really isn't that bad. You push that big old egg out of you, honey, so. And you seem fine. Are y'all being friendly again? I hate seeing y'all in a tiff. Yeah? I mean, honestly, guys, I think Ellie has the video. At first, I thought they were, like, fighting each other in the water. But I think they were actually trying to, I think Adam or Steve was trying to mate Pablo in the water, which obviously just kind of won't happen. And ever since then, Pablo's been really angry. Um, hey, what's going on with you? What's going on here? What's going on? Oh, oh, okay. It was a tail feather. It was just the base of a tail feather. He's good. So maybe they're good guys. I don't know. But ever since then, we've been a little rocky relationship, but maybe this is a good sign. But guys, I want to tell you a little bit about a story while I'm walking to try to get um, stuff for my Polish palace. Um, I know y'all just want to see the animals a lot, but I'm loving on them. But right now, I'm just trying to do what makes me feel good after losing honeydew. And I just don't feel like I have the energy to, sadly, like fully give the animals, especially on camera right now. Even though I'm not different on and off camera, don't think that. But it's still just a little, a little hard for me. I can only take so much before grief and guilt starts to take over. So I'm trying, but I want to know, I want to tell y'all why this thing with honeydew was so hard for me. I actually had the video that was going to go out the, at 10 o'clock the morning that honeydew passed yesterday morning. I was going to have... A video talking about that go out and her vet visit and how all that went but I decided not to upload it it didn't feel appropriate anymore and so I just still want to tell y'all the story so let's see I need to check on hey hey first it's been hot um, hi hey 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 buddy hi babies Oh yeah, I definitely got a rooster in there. He's huge. Um, so I think I got a rooster and two hens. Anyway, so when Elvis was born five years ago, 2018, he was a twin, um, Elvis and Presley. Elvis, we immediately knew something was wrong. You know, mom was starting to reject him, but we still gave him some time with mom because she was trying. Ultimately, we found out that um, Elvis was blind. We thought it was pink eye, he's blind. We bring Elvis inside. A couple days later, Presley, I'm telling the story about Presley because I didn't get to upload that video. Um, so a couple days later, Hi. I know you're waiting on me for the Polish palace. No, it's okay. I'm, I need to make a video anyway, so I'm just messing around. Okay, so I'm going to sit right here because it's nice and cool. So we bring Elvis inside. He's been to the vet, and then we notice Presley's really lethargic. Well, it turns out she's outside... Thank you. And not lethargic. Um, she's paralyzed. She cannot stand up. Um, I'm assuming mom might have 
stepped on her or something like that because she was a tiny baby. If I have pictures, I'll be sure to sprinkle some in here. Um, again, I only had her for like probably 10 days, two weeks at the most um, before I had to put her down. But so she, we took her to the vet and we got her some steroid shots and they're like, you know, honestly, like this might work because we have rehabilitated a paralyzed goat before, but this also might not work. This, if something is wrong with like her nerve system, like we, the steroid shots will help. But if it's neurological, it's not gonna help. So we hoped and prayed that it was nervous system issues and she got better and she started standing, you know, she started to thrive much better than Elvis and Elvis was an inside goat and she became one too, but she was starting to thrive even more than him. And we're like, she's gonna get to go outside soon, you know? And we'll bottle feed her outside after we feel the vet has cleared her. And then comes the 4th of July, which the 4th and 5th of July are two days that I truly hate now. Um, I've never liked the 4th of July because of fireworks, because I have animals. But now the 4th and 5th of July are really hard days for me, even five years later. Really hard days for me to cope with. And so on the 4th of July, we were over at my aunt's house with the goats. We were celebrating 4th of July and Presley started laying down a lot again. And we're like, this is, you know, not a good sign. We were finished with the steroid shot. And so she was no longer able to stand again. That night we go home, she's screeching in pain um, all night long. I didn't sleep. She, she screamed all night. She couldn't get comfortable. Um, it was awful. And so that next morning my mom you know we were up all night and it was like seven o'clock in the morning our vets opened at eight and she's like you need to make a decision right now for this goat and because presley was my goat elvis was not my goat at the time he was attached to my mom and ranka and presley was mine she's like you need to make a decision about this goat and at first like i didn't understand i'm like what do you mean like we'll just go get her more steroid shots and she's like no you need to mind you i was 18 but i've never had to do this before and she's like no you need to think about her quality of life. Is having her on steroid shots for the rest of her life, one, it's expensive, let's acknowledge that, but two, is that really a quality of life for her where you have to hold her down every night to give her a shot? Because it hurts, it's not a comfortable shot. The steroid medicine, they can feel it. Is that a comfortable life for her? Is that what you wanna give for her? So, you know, I had to make the heartbreaking decision of putting her down and I didn't wanna go. I didn't wanna go to the vet with my mom. I told her I wasn't going and my mom made me get in the car with the goat and made me go and put her down. Um, that sounds really like cutthroat and kind of ruthless, but I would not, this is gonna sound horrible, but I wouldn't trade that experience at all. I'm so glad that I had to do that because it has given me such an outlook on animal lives that is like, it, would you say like an invaluable experience or a valuable experience? How would you word that? I don't know. Um, my English skills aren't the greatest. It, it's an experience Let's that- Let's say priceless. That's a priceless great. experience. I mean, horrible, horrible experience. Don't get me wrong. But the wisdom I've come away from that, come away from with that is something that you just, you have to experience. People can tell you, but you have to experience it. And I can tell you, you know, first, they're given a injection to make them go to sleep. It, um, it's very peaceful, they go to sleep. And then normally when they go to sleep, they release their bowels. And when I say sleep, I purely mean go to sleep, not like they've put them down yet. Because after that, they give the lethal injection, which stops their heart. Um, and as soon as she went to sleep, you know, I'm sitting there, I'm sitting right above her face. So all she sees is me. The very last thing that she saw was me. Um, you can tell five years later and this goat still has my heart, you know, we're coming up on the 4th and 5th of July in like a week or two and I'm, I'm dreading it, um, because I hate it. I, I hate that I couldn't do more for her, but I was the one that decided peace for her and she looked so peaceful and pain free once she went to sleep because when she actually went to sleep, she got a pain injection as well and Pain, pain free injection. So it was peaceful. And then we gave her a little burial um, out in our out in our yard and 
that was the life of Presley. And it was very, very similar to Honey. So when Honey started to show signs like Presley was of not being able to stand and just being in pain 24 seven, I knew that this, I, I'm gonna have to be the one to advocate, not that Ellie couldn't advocate for her either, but I'm the one that has the most experience in this area and I'm gonna have to be the one to truly shed some light on this because when it comes to our animals, we wanna say we'll always do the best thing for them, but there is in human nature, a little bit of selfishness in us because we don't wanna let them go because we love them but ultimately you have to do what's best for them. And so, you know, honey passed Wednesday, Tuesday, we were at the vet and you know, she's like, she looks healthy, you know, keep giving her the injections. We'll, we'll see how it goes. We're gonna play it day by day. And then, so I was like, I went into that appointment thinking we were gonna have to euthanize her, honestly. And we didn't. And then she ended up passing the next morning. So she's out of pain now, but it was eerily similar to my Presley. And that's why I'm having a really, really hard time with it right now. And being around Walter Mellon is really hard for me because. Should we send him to Pawpaw then? No. <laughs> No, no, no. I went out there and loved on him. It's just a little bit hard. Like, I have, like, a cap right now. Like, I loved on Imogene and all of them, and I told the viewers, like, the animals aren't suffering, you know. Like, yeah. I'm still giving them love, but I need you to recognize that it's a little bit hard for me right now. Even the cats, I'm not... I just, I feel, like, kind of numb, and it's, it's, it's hard. It's, like, bittersweet almost, because Walter is so sweet to look at and to watch, but it's so bitter because it's a reminder of his sister. I get him. It's difficult, but working through it and hopefully this grieving period is short because I don't like feeling like this. I don't think Honey would want me to feel like this. No. So I can try to push away the feelings when I'm inside. I'm fine, right? Yeah. Because I can, I'm distracted and I can push away the feelings. But when I come out here and I see all these animals, I just, I'm just like... In my head, I'm like, which one am I gonna fail next? Even though I know I didn't fail her, but obviously you can see where the crazy part of my brain is, is coming in. That's it, you're on house arrest. Yeah, guys, so you just got a lot of stories. I know you just wanna see the animals, but please bear with me as I'm working through all of this. But you got some stories of yesterday. Yesterday was a very, I'm, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Yesterday was an awful day for me. It was awful. Our day started early with the most awful thing you can imagine, and then we end it with my legs. So, and then there's things going on with my chickens. So, you know, it's just, it's great. But yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed that little bunch of story times and catch you on the next video. Bye friends. Mm -hmm.